ending now or you know taking another base or in base hatchery or is he teching? Of course you get that with the other two races, but I don't know, with Zerg it, it just feels more free, you know, like like there's less of a timing for it. <clears throat> so anyways, all that good stuff going on, lots of drones popping out here. Uh supply depot going up at the top of that ramp. Um, like I was saying, you cannot put a barracks and a supply depot here to complete the wall off to your ramp, which makes it so Zerglings cannot get up your ramp. To see what's above it, you can see approximately this much uh, once you get to uh, this position here. So, I mean, it does kind of give you a little bit more that you can see, and it also means that, well, you're not going to have a bunch of Marines standing here. So, that's going to help out a little bit. Anyways, it looks like this SCV now going into the cross position. You're going to see nothing at all. And meanwhile, Zerg is plopping down that hatchery, so I believe it was a hatch first. Yeah, no spawning pool sp spawning pool to speak of. And so I believe he's going to be getting that, well, it looks like on 15. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> you can get the spawning pool on 16, then it lines up nicely so you get the two queens, but I do think it actually hurts your economy. You know, you do get the two queens out at the same time, so it lines up nicely, but at the same time, it's like, okay... You know, you don't have that extra queen for extra larva, you know, that much sooner, which does hurt your economy in the long run. Uh, excuse me, my voice is, I don't know, I feel like there's something in my voice and I can't cough it out. So, anyways, SV now just doing a little dance across the creep there on the dance floor. Taryn adding on a factory, factory reactor, so, um, yep, there's that refinery. Going, uh, Hellions, Blue Flame, well, not Blue Flame yet, he's getting that reactor instead of a tech lab. Um, but you can get a start port soon after, and you can do a nice timing where you send a, a Banshee to your Zerg opponent's base and then send the Hellions in. Actually, the Hellions are first and then the Banshee. Uh, looks like he's thrown down that bunker. Now, of course, that bunker is not really a threat because there are no Marines on the way. Um, and there's really not ever going to be, so that's really just to make it so drones get pulled off. But looks like Jake Bake is not going to bite. He knows better. Um, apparently that bunker is maybe going to get finished. I don't know. <laughs> looks like two Zerglings have come out now, so... Um, I don't know, I, I really hate that. you got to like manually tell your guys to go around, and then it just doesn't work out very well. So anyways, there's that cancel on that. Um, now... The thing is, with that bunker, you get 75% back now instead of 100%, which to me is much more reasonable uh, for the Zerg, just because you know being able to do that for absolute no cost is absolutely absurd. So I'm glad, uh, very glad that Blizzard fixed that finally. You know, after having StarCraft out for so long and having it there. Uh, anyways, it looks like this uh, Zergly, not Marine, can be roasted by that Hellion. Helly now going to move on to the Zerg's base. Now, of course, on this map, since Shakur's Plateau does have a shorter ramp, there's not much area around the natural here. It's a little bit easier to defend. It looks like he's going to right past that spine crawler. Nope, that queen is going to block both of them. Very good play by Jake Big. Killing off both those guys for free. They picked off one measly Zergling. That was it. That's worth, what, not even one larva? That's one half larva. You know, if you can believe that. That, uh, you know, larva is pretty, pretty expensive. You know, you only get so many. But, uh, you know, the, the 25 minerals, whatever, that doesn't, even, that doesn't even matter, right? So, anyways, looks like Jake Bake scouting the fronts here. Gonna see pretty much nothing. That's just no units here for Faith. Faith just pretty much doing anything he wants. He's taking up right now. He's getting up that command center. And I just feel like that there should be some kind of opening here for Zerg. You know, like, like with Toss, like against Protoss, there would be a huge opening here. If Protoss decided to go fast Colossus and he put down a Nexus this early, like... You know, like, that Protoss would be dead. Zerg would just go in there and kill him, you know? Like, could build up a whole bunch of roaches. But, I mean, there's just... I feel like there's a lot that Terran can do just because that he has this wall off here. Complete wall off. He doesn't even have to lift his barracks and whatnot. You know, he could build up a bunch of Zerglings right now, but, of course, the Hellions are out, and the Hellions do so much damage against the Zerglings. And, of course, he could get roaches, but, I mean, I don't know. There's just a, a lot of stuff that could happen that would screw you over as Zerg, so I mean, it is kind of a uh, very risky play to do that, more so than against Protoss. So, anyways, that command center is finished now. I do wonder if he's going to be lifting it up. Probably not yet. He's probably just producing SVs out of it, since he does not have any units to defend it with. Whoa, he's actually going to go for it. Um, now, this, to me, is a little bit ballsy, but of course, he can lift off at any given time, and Zerg can't do anything about it, so... 
Um, again, it's pretty much like he gets a free expansion, if he gets attacked, it's just runs away, you know, it's like, okay. I don't know. I just, I just have, like, I'm not trying to say Xerx or Terran's in balance, I'm tr just trying to say that they have a lot of little things like that that are um, really annoying to Zerg players that they can just get away with. And it looks like that Zergling gonna run all the way in there, it looks like, wow, he, he ran past everything. There is one Marine in the back there, in case there is apparently something. Uh, however, there is a Banshee on the way. Now, where is, is there an evil chamber? Okay, Bane Nest and an Observer. So Jake Bake trying to get away with the bare minimum here so he can spend the rest of his money on that Spire. Uh, which is going to be coming out soon. Now he does have that Banshee to deal with, but of course um, he really just needs one more Queen up here. And you know, with that good creep spread, he's not going to have any problem whatsoever. And it looks like Faith here in a little bit of trouble. You know, he spent quite a bit of money getting that Banshee out, quite a bit of money getting those Hellions out. And pretty much both were thwarted very easily. And this Banshee now at 5 life. And unlike Protoss, you know, you don't get that life back. You don't get any shields, you know. It's not like Zerg where it slowly goes up e even. That Banshee is completely... Well, it needs to be repaired anyway. You know, it gets repaired, he's fine. <laughs> so anyways, look, let's look at the unit counts. I have 41 SCVs to 51 drones. Jake Bake doing an awesome job just getting up a lot of drones. And, you know, get, getting away with the bare minimum. You know, he just did not get any extra queens. Well, I guess he got an extra queen for the creep, but... Um, actually, one, two, three, four... Okay, he does have some extra queens, but... Uh, anyways, he only needed a couple for that Banshee. And he had that Overseer for it as well, you know, he had that Spinecrawler and the Queen. Just one Spinecrawler and one Queen, queen against two uh, Hellions. You know, that's pretty good as well. So, I mean, for Faith, it's actually not so much that he has to do damage with it, it's more so that with those Hellions running around, um, potentially harassing the Zerg player, he's able to get up this expansion fairly easily. And that's pretty much what we saw this game. Uh, no Blue Flame yet. Um, upgrades, upgrades, no upgrades. Apparently there was a... Where was he? Where was he? Oh, I don't know. Well, there was a changeling somewhere that was killed off. Overseer, or nope, that's the Overlord. Where's the Overseer? 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 No, nope. apparently no Overseers yet. I mean, I know there's one somewhere, but I'm not sure where he is. Um, but Mulus have joined the fights, or is on the board at least, um, with that Spire now. Zerg is taking a third now, which is pretty much the best time to get a third. Of course, uh, if you can, I'd say get it before Terran puts up, like if you know Terran's expanding, like, or or you're doing a huge tech route, like I'd say definitely want to get a third up, uh, if possible, just because, you know, if he goes Banshee or something like that, of course he can use the Banshee to take out that third, but it's really not going to do much. So anyways, lots of uh, Marines here, doing a little bit of damage to those, uh, <laughs> well I just cannot talk today, I don't know what it is. Uh, doing a little bit of damage to those Mutalists, but the Mutalists are doing alright, they're going to be... Uh, possibly healed by these queens with the transfuge, fusion. What is he? Oh, okay, creep tumors. No, apparently not. It's just gonna float around. There's that overseer. All right. So it looks like, uh, well, Banshee doing a little bit of damage around the map. Pretty much just having map control, looking around, you know, making sure Zerg does not have the watchtowers. So I mean, that is a big thing. Just having that, you know, that sight. That sight allows map control. Map control makes it so you can see traps and whatnot coming. So I mean. <clears throat> I don't know, Jake Bakes just gonna or put a new guy there soon, I do believe. But uh well, with these mules flying around, this Banshee uh well he's not gonna be able to do too much, you know. Zerg's struggling for that map control as well. And of course the Zerg the Zerg units are just better at map control, so I mean it's not really there's not really too much faith can do here at this point with that. So he's probably gonna be scouting around seeing that fourth going up. Uh, I'm not sure if he's seen has he seen yeah, he has seen the third going up. So, I mean, he does know that Zerk is on two bases. Or, uh, three bases, excuse me. Uh, meanwhile, it looks like Mila's trying to get in here, doing a little bit of damage, but it looks like Faith here doing so much of an all-in here. He does have a lot of SVs. Nope, he's actually setting up expansion. My bad. <laughs> I thought he was going to go right over there, but uh, I did not see that command center float over there. So he's uh, pretty much just setting up that um, orb or, uh, planetary fortress. Not orbital command. I send up some tanks and stuff in the middle here. Now, of course, you don't want it too close to your third not, and not too close to your natural. You want it right in the middle. Uh, just in case there is an attack at third, then you can move your Marines up there. And the tanks are, you know, they, they're they at a good position either way. You know, it's going to be hard for Zerg to get in, up to the natural. So, 
Uh, it's going to be sitting pretty good. Anyways, lots of missile turrets going up for Faith pretty much everywhere. Let's make sure the Mutalists do not really do much. Now, of course, um, if, you know, if Jake Bait goes a lot of Mutas, and he does have quite a few, he can take out quite a few miss missile turrets. But, I mean, Faith here, you know, he's going to be able to push his Marines back into his base by the time those missile turrets go down. Um, it's just a good idea to have a few extra missile turrets the further out you are from your base so that you have more time to get back. Um, and, do, you know, when you need to, you know, it just pretty much denies the Mutalist some damage, um, you know, for a certain amount of time. Yeah, just too many mu too many uh, missile turrets there, Jake Bake, just trying not to get his Mutalist killed here. Oh, one free tank right there sitting in the middle. And it looks like they found the hole going right through the center here, but it looks like this Mutalist turret... Uh, and this store, actually, the store doing a lot of damage, and these mutas are forced to fly out of there. And uh, Thor having two kills already, just taking all the other mutas down to orange life here. And well, Zerg is ahead on the food count. Looks like uh, he's pretty much at 200 food. I mean, you know, 190 to 150. So there's a pretty big. Uh, well, I wouldn't call it a lead, just because I feel like that's pretty normal for Zerg, just having a lot of extra food because uh well a lot of things cost a lot of food so anyways here's a pretty good engagement here lots of tanks just going straight for those bane lanes doing a good job of just keeping up with that however there's just a lot of throws and whatnot up here and actually some pretty good micro as well uh making sure those bane lanes do not pop on the thors just going right for the marines and whatnot however it does look like this attack is completely being cleaned up by faith and jake bake here is in quite a bit of trouble here but at the same time he can replenish all of his stuff anyway, so I mean, there's really not too much um, of a problem there. But Jake Big, or I mean, Faith here does have a little bit of a window of opportunity here. Uh, but it looks like Jake Big just scattering his guys over here, making sure that that attack does not succeed. And well, Faith here just going too much in there. Um, you know, I don't know. I guess he just really did not have enough guys or enough leftover guys after the big battle to really have a counterattack. You know, if he did a drop or something like that afterwards, that would be fine to me, but uh, Jake Bake just doing an awesome job keeping up with that unit production and just cranking out Zerglings and Banelings and everything. Uh, plenty of Mutas as well, too. So that those extra bases doing their work for them. It looks like 80 drones to 68 SCVs, so Jake Bake here just having some really good drone production. Um, of course, there's a, a limit. I don't know if he really wants much more than 80. Uh, Looks like 80 is the perfect stopping amount. Um, now there's actually a little bit of a trick that I forget who. Well, excuse me. One second. There's a big battle here, and it looks like everything. Well, looks like actually Terran is kind of behind after this. You know, the store and these Marines. I don't know. It's Terran, I feel, just cannot produce enough at this point. You know, Zerg. I I often see Zerg overrun Terran in the late game. Um, unlike Protoss, you know, Protoss really just. You know, it's really hard to overrun Protoss in the late game. But it looks like, uh, well, Jake Baker just doing a good job cleaning everything up. And he's going to be bringing in some more Zerglings and whatnot for that attack. Uh, probably killing off some SVs with those. Nope, going right up to the main here. And, well, SVs have been pulled off as well. Yep, there's, <laughs> there's really not much faith here can do. So I do believe there's going to be a GG here any moment. Command Center almost finished. It got so close. Just so close. Marines, they do have the plus two attack, plus one armor. The Zerglings do have plus two attack. And the Mutos do have plus two attack as well. So, Jake Bake here spending more money on those upgrades. Unless, uh, well, I suppose Faith could have some upgrades on his tanks. Uh, yep, one attack on his mech units. And, well, like I said, there's really not much you can do at this point. Uh-huh. There goes that tank. Lots of guys just being demolished here. The base is just gonna be destroyed. Everything, everything's gone. Everything's dead. Yep. 